The good folks at Comics for Fun and Profit have been doing two episodes a week um, for quite some time now, and it's all thanks to, first of all, Jason, and second of all, our patrons, who allow us to add the space on our server, broadcast more, store more, share more with you listeners. I'm envious of those of you who have unlimited storage and media server capabilities. We, we pay for ours here at, at the C4FAP. It ain't cheap. We thank you so much for those of you who go to patreon.com slash comics fun profit and contribute at any level to say thanks, to say I want to be a part of your Slack channel conversations. I want to get exclusives. I want to get early access. I want to get ad free access. I want to get swag. I want to get some free stuff. Whatever your reasoning is, we appreciate it at any level because it does make a difference. So from the bottom of Kyle and I and Jason's heart, thank you for contributing. Thank you for listening to Comics for Fun and Profit. This is Kyle Drew with your sneak peek at next week, episode number 795. Our comics originally coming out January the 17th and January the 18th. But before Drew and I get into what's coming up in your local comic book shop this coming Tuesday and Wednesday. Drew, we missed a week. Did anything crazy happen in the world of comics? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Nothing nothing really jumps out. Um, Way to surmise. It, what do you, I mean, do you, you thinking of something in particular? Not really. No. No, I can't I can't think of anything off the top of my head that was uh groundbreaking or super exciting. So really Let's cool roll. Uh, second trailer for Quantumania. Looked pretty dope. Yeah, I didn't watch that. How was it? I was, I was really like, cool. I don't think I want any more spoilers on that, so yeah. I skipped it. Ah, uh, gotcha. It was good. But you're, but you're saying good stuff. Very. Maybe I should check it out. I don't know. Does it does it spoil anything interesting that I should stay away from? No, you just really get Kang being a bad guy. Oh, okay. Which is like, okay, now I'm in. You're like, now right, you now man, you see what the I deal see is. It. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Let's roll right into March's uh, Marvel previews. That is January for March, right? Yeah, let's march right in. <laughs> yeah. Oof, you have been you've been gone. Yeah, it's been. I apologize. Let me get them all out of, out of the way, and we'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> of course, this is January for March uh, Marvel previews. Of course, first thing I do is I stop on page three to see the Disney one. And here we have Goofy Hulk. Pretty oh, cool. wow. You like that. I can tell. I might. I mean, I like, to be fair, I've liked all three of them. So just FYI. Yeah, true, true. Um, when we go get to the Doctor Strange relaunch, mm-hmm. um, we're back to Jed McKay at the helm. Had a few other people taking a turn. Um and now we're going to go back with Jed, Jed McKay doing the relaunch and Pascal Ferry on art. But then Alex Ross covers, baby. Yeah, I don't love the Timeless Dormammu variant <laughs> cover at all. Um, I'm not sure what the regular cover is going to look like. Is it, oh, it's it's one page down. Yep, it's the big one that's that, on the actual yeah, cover. That's the- that one's fine. That one's that <laughs> one's vintage Rossi. Mm-hmm. Uh, Steve Scrochi's fantastic. I love the Marco Cicchetto, too, but the the Scroochy. The Scroochy's great. And then we have Nightcrawlers. Number two, this one came out last month. Because we talked about your boy, Cy Spurrier, being in charge of that one. Yeah, yeah. I still don't remember what, what the deal is. The Sinister. This is Sins of Sinister. This was part of that, remember? Oh, we yeah, yeah. We hear that. Storm and the Brotherhood of Mutants. That's also a two. It's also Sins of Sinister. A moral X Men to two, mm-hmm. but then we have X twenty three, so we get our um, Laura back, uh, headlining a title. It's five issues. Uh, Eric Schultz at the helm. Edgar Salazar. Erica Schultz. What did I say? Eric. I said Eric Schultz. Mm-hmm. And Edgar Salazar. Did I say Eddie? <laughs> <laughs> did I screw that up too. No, not that one. And then we get a uh, an X twenty three number one facsimile. I'd rather uh, have that? that. 
That's her first singular series. That's not what is that the the NYX. Yeah, the NYX is the first appearance. That's the one you want. As yes. A this is just going back to 2005. Yeah. But uh, yeah, great Mike Joy cover. Um, wonder what they're gonna legacy her at. 25. Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That Mike Choi cover is really cool. It is really nice. Yeah. And we're getting uh, Spider Gwen Shadow Clones, a fi- another five issue series launching with Emily Kim and Kei Zama on art with a Nakayama, David Nakayama cover, which is dope. That there, Peach Momoko's doing design variants now. That's pretty cool. Stealth yeah. Cover is awesome. Not too bad. Yeah. So this, okay. So again, Spider Gwen, as we know it, is also the moniker Ghost Spider, which yeah. still hasn't caught on, but they're still trying to shoot porn it in. So Ghost Spider comes face to face with some of the deadliest Spider Man villains, including Doc Ock, Sandman, Vulture, and more. But wait, why do they all look like Gwen? Writer Emily Kim, who we know from Silk, and Kay Zama, who we should know from Avengers Mech Strike, take Gwen on a t- twisted path as she must stop whoever is cloning her into infamous villain. Yeah, they started with they started with Spider Gwen. She was Spider Gwen. Correct. And, and then they she got popular, and mm-hmm. they said, "Well, we shouldn't call her Spider Gwen. That's not very in- interesting." Well, because originally she was just a transverse of Peter, and the only uniquity is the fact that she was the one that lived and he was the one that died. So she was essentially a version of Peter. Right. So that's right. why the Gwen moniker <laughs> made sense. But now that she's her own person, not we really. Cause go we, deeper. We, we never called him Spider Peter. No, but you know everything was based on Peter Parker, Spider Man, and Spider even Peter is Spider awesome. Gwen was based on a version of Peter Parker where he died. Yeah, and then so the the guy the 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 marketing wizards at Marvel decided let's go with Ghost Spider. They workshopped that in a focus group, with all the Funyuns and Yoo-Hoo you could drink, and that they came. Miss. They came out with Ghost Spider. Uh, nobody liked it from the beginning. Uh, um, so I still call her Spider Gwen. Probably always will. Um, still fact, a fun they are, character. They are making this book Spider Gwen. They're yeah, just think, referencing her in, the, in everything as Ghost Spider. Yeah, they've accepted the fact that they can't get away from it. And I am wonder what the... I'm sure they don't call her Ghost Spider in the the new animated Miles Morales thing, right? No, she hadn't been, but who know? Yeah. Uh, then we're going to relaunch Venom Lethal Protector with David Michelini and Fareed Karami. They're giving Peach Momoko plenty of work, aren't we? This is true. Uh, yeah. We got a Cosmic Ghost Rider with Stephanie Phillips this time. That was Donny Cates, right? I believe did, so. Did Cosmic. Yeah. And uh, he couldn't really keep it going, so I don't really feel... Real strongly about Stephanie Phillips taking over. No, trying the to Cosmic is a really cool character. Yeah, you think? Yeah. I don't remember liking it that much. <laughs> uh, Hellcat gets relaunched to five issue. This is Christopher Cantwell, Alex Lins. Uh, Why should I care about Hellcat? Um, the the Iron Man Hellcat book was really good. Um, yeah. Was that enough to launch a series? I don't know. I mean, I like Christopher Cantwell, but I'll give I'll give it a I'll give it a. Do you issue. like Supernatural? Sure. Okay, there you go. Sometimes. Hallow's Eve uh, is a five issue launching with Erica Schultz and Michael Dowling on art. Um, what do we got here? This is spinning out of Amazing Spider-Man. Hallow's Eve gets her own series. So another. This, she's a villain, right? Yes. I assume. What do you think of that Chris Allen cover? Well, the masks. I don't love it. It looks like, um, no, it looks like a middle school yeah, it looks art like project. Cut a bunch of things, like a serial killer cut a bunch of things out of a magazine and glued them to a thing. But. Yeah, and some of them aren't that great. Mm. He's a stormbreaker, though. 
Uh, Amazing Spider-Man hits 21. Ooh, we're only four issues away for an anniversary. Yeah, I do love the Stormbreaker on that. The Silk Stormbreaker. That's awesome. John Basel Dua. Yeah. Oh, my God. 21 issues in. And this time, we've and it's finally time for us to find out what Peter did. We've been 20 issues in before we find out. Now, it's been derailed with a lot of events, so I will give them that. But Jesus Christ, they beat around the bush on this. <laughs> so, fit 20 issues at $4 a piece, it costs you $80 to find out what Peter did. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Avengers 66, still a thing. Avengers Assemble Part 8. Avengers I don't Friday. remember how many parts. Kyle, I'll let you take the creative team for I Am Iron Man number one. Moraiwa, Oyodel, and Dutan Akande. Very good. I'm going to say that's spot on. Yeah. Exactly how their mother pronounces their names. No better way to celebrate Iron Man's 60th anniversary. Is that one of the five issue series? Yeah. Yeah. I don't need to do that. Avengers 9 facsimile for Wonder Man. Okay. Rick Remender and Her- Jerome Pena give us Rage of Ultron Marvel Tales number one. This is, um, what is this? Is this seriously an, an OGN? Mm-hmm. Or like an Ultron's o- full robotic rage is unleashed as we celebrate the legacy of the House of Ideas with Marvel Tales. This anthology series shines a spotlight on... On fan favorite characters, features timeless stories, and highlights some of Marvel's most impressive talent from the past eight decades. An original graphic novel from the blockbuster team of Remender and Jerema Pena and Pepe Larraz, a classic victory for the Avengers becomes a nightmare years later. Ultron, the homicidal artificial intelligence so long devoted to ending life on Earth, has found a new world to conquer. One of its own horrific legacy. So this is new material, but yes. it's, it's it's in that classic timeline. Correct. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'll allow it. Red Goblin 2. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Women of Marvel number one. Melissa Flores and many, many more. Jody Nishimi. Jisha Jima. And many, many more on art. Rogan Gambit doing a five issue series. Also, Stephanie Phillips. Yeah. I don't know. Well, it could be fun. Did, yeah, I, you didn't read the Gambit series, did you? No, I heard it was awful. Yeah, it wasn't great. Uh, then we have I like, this, I like this cover on 31 with the classic looking Rogan Gambit from the 90s cartoon. I like that cover. What page? Uh, digital 33, physical 31. Oh, gotcha. Some uh, Michael Allred art for you. Ah, ah, really excellent. Uh, New Mutants Lethal Legion, five issue series. Charlie Jane Anders. Who are these kids? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> no the idea. Shadow King, Human, Demon Bear. Is that, themselves. is that Velma on the left? <laughs> I think so. From the Scooby gang? Yeah. What is going on? Uh, Spider-Man Unforgiven, Tim Seeley. Tim Seeley, there we go. Here, boy. Uh, Sid Kotchin, Kahots, Stormbreaker, Nick Klein. Stormbreaker's kind of dope. X-Men Unforgiven, also Tim Seeley. These are just one shots, both of them. Mm-hmm. Murder World Game Over. Kyle, let me tell you about my trip down Murder World. Do it. So uh, I picked up Murder World Spider-Man. It was great. It was Spider. It was Murder World Spider-Man number one. But it was number two <laughs> in the series because Murder World X-Men number one had come, at, come out earlier in the month or the previous month. And I didn't put two and two together. That these are this, these series of Murder World number ones are actually a continuing story, um, cause I'm dumb, I think. Or, so each one is a consecutive one, but not 
consecutive yes. in the fact that they tell you that. Yeah. Instead of Murder World number one, two, and three, it's Murder World X Men number one, Spider Man number one, and Game Over number one. But they're one, two, and three. So am I? Am I the no, asshole? No, that's, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> okay. But, I, I mean, I was able to pick up. It doesn't seem like much happened in that first issue because I was able to pick up with it where it left off pretty good. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm sh- actually, I'm, I'm guessing Game Over isn't number three. It's probably number whatever. I just have to. Con- but there's no way to know. Like the actual. Or, yeah, you just got to get all the murder worlds. To be fair, this is the grand finale. Yes. So. I read the second one, which was Spider-Man. I'm not sure what the third one is or the fourth one or whatever, whatever the numbers are to get to this one. But they're all going to be Murder World, World, colon, something, number one. But they're actually in a series of of themselves. You just got to know that. So if you walk into a comic shop, God forbid, as a as a new reader and look at the shiny new number one, you're going to be sorely disappointed. You could grab a number one that's actually a finality. Yes. yes. If ever there was a book to wait for the trade, this be them. Yeah. They could just call it Murder World. Yeah. Probably should. Predator. Predator gets relaunched. Predator gets relaunched. We just. We can't even beat a five yet, can we? That, that did not take long at all. Well, I guess that girl's story is over wonder how it turned out <laughs> hopefully i'll find out soon i don't like the giuseppe Coley art cover but to yeah. be fair i also hate this steve scrochi for clobbering time yeah you're not the scrochi fan i am right never have been so you're telling me you like that cover um i yes i like scrochi art and that is scrochi that is vintage scrochy. Yes, I like even that. the weird little windowed thing that they forgot to take out of the top of it, where they put in clobber and time in text and forgot to remove the windowing. What does that mean? You see that box at the top where they just kind of threw text up on it. Like I see clobber and time over the bubble. Mm-hmm. You see clobber and time, and then if you look like an inch to the right and an inch to the left, you can see line work where they oh, ran a text box yeah, around yeah. it. Yeah, I can and see didn't, that. This is, again, where we talked about how little effort they actually put into these. Um, so that's, yeah, that, that could have been smushed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, and you know, I th- it looks like Hulk may have, like, really stoved his pinky toe. Yeah, yeah. But still, I like this. This this would not turn me off. And it's Steve Scrooge doing the whole now, thing, all five, all five issues, so. Now, does... Does thing typically his rocks look like flesh and he bleeds underneath them? Is no, that a bit not of thing? typically. Not typically. Typically, no. Okay, I I thought that would be a never thing, and it, yeah, and probably not a lot of scratches that dig through um, Hulk flesh. Yeah. So that's that would be an interpretation, I guess. Cute though. Cute. I don't know if "cute" is the right word, but okay, it's your word. Yeah. Cute. Betsy Braddock, number two, Captain Britain, number two, uh, Bloodline, Daughter of Blade, number two, Silver Surfer Ghost Light, number two. I have nothing to say about any of those. Help, stop, jump in if there's something exciting there, Kyle. Yeah. Bishop War College, too. Nothing you can see they've also thrown that War College badge on there uh, in post. Same windowing. <laughs> I don't think that. I think that's actually a transition from light to dark. Yeah, I see a lot of them. Where they do that. It's just so dumb. Spider-Man: The Lost Hunt. That's a cool looking cover. Five of five. Yeah, that's a that's an homage looking cover. From something. Ryan Brown does good work. Gold Goblin finishes up. That's fifth. Man, nobody cared at all about that book. Maybe, maybe somebody did. Not not here on this podcast though. Yeah. Spider-Man 6, Slot and Bagley together again. In Slot we trust. Not making huge huge inroads, but I'm sure somebody likes it. Miles Morales, Spider-Man 4, Cody Ziegler. I decided to sit this one out, this relaunch out. 
waiting for a better creative team. No offense, Cody. Uh, Carnage 11, Alex Pacanow, Venom 17, Al Ewing, and Cafu. Cafu. Mary Jane, Mary Jane and Black Cat, some great covers there. That, yeah. Yeah, I'm in there. That's Paolo Sequeira, um, an Alex Ross, great cover. Mm-hmm. I don't know which one the Russell Dodderman is, but I bet it's good. Miracle Man. It's Jeff. Kelly Thompson. Gary Huru. So if you like that freaking shark, land shark from West Coast Avengers, there you go. 40 pages, six bucks. Yeah. It's Jeff. <laughs> I don't. It's not, it's, no, it's corn. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not corn. Uh, X Men 20, Dugan, Caselli, Garrett, Jerry Dugan, Stefano, Caselli. Still letting Dugan write X Men comics. That's cool. Good looking Alex Ross Juggernaut co- Timeless cover. Yeah, on the Captain Marvel. Mm hmm. Hitting 47. Issue 47. So we're almost to another anniversary issue there. We'll make a big deal of that, I'm assuming. Did you see this Extreme X Men 5? The Young June Yoon cover? Yeah, that is the worst homage I've ever seen in my entire life. What are they going after? So that's obviously the Wolverine one where he's, you know, got the three claws up and, and, and given the come here sign. That's awful. So it kind of misses the spirit of it. Yeah. An execution. Yeah. That's the thing about homage is I don't even think you have to ask permission. <laughs> I think that would have been rejected. Mm-hmm. Now, Scarlet Witch 3, Nebetsi Zitro. Really good cover. Really good cover. Mm-hmm. It's Orlando, though. Captain America, Symbol of Truth. Taki Onyabuchi and R.B. Silva. Captain America, the Sentinel, Sentinel of Liberty. Getting all Modak. A little Modak. Or Modok. Sorry, I always call it Modak. The Avengers War Across Time. Paul Levitz and Alan Davis, some classic creators there. Avengers Beyond, the brothers Derek Landy and Greg Land. You are launching a book on page 61. Yeah, they must have That's seen it. so weird. <laughs> yeah, Look, true story, but still. Looks terrible. Is that the Beyonder? That is the Beyonder. Wow, bringing back the Beyonder. Getting him relevant again before we get to the Secret <laughs> Wars time, I guess. Invincible Iron Man 4. I'm not reading that. Fantastic Four 5. I am current. So I've read the first three issues of Fantastic Four by Ryan North and Ivan Fiorelli. I think it was, it was, I think it was somebody else on the earlier issues. but um, Fiorelli. Uh, really great. Really great. All three issues are really good. So. Well worth reading. Uh, Deadpool 5, Alyssa Wong, Martin Kokala, Moon Knight 21, my boy Jed McKay, and Alessandro Cappuccio. A sinister Pied Piper plays a deadly tune, one that spells death and chaos for all who hear it. Moon Knight and his companions are put in an impossible situation. How do you fight someone whose will is not their own? <gasps> Kyle, what number... Is Moon Knight going to get to before it A gets 22. rebooted or B just gets canceled? It, my, it will not make it to 30. I think it'll make it to 25. Yeah. I think they'll do another cash grab. Or, unless we have a uh we have a legacy coming up. But I mean I, but we don't see we don't know sales, so maybe sales are still strong. I just can't imagine they are. I read it, but I can't imagine not a lot of people do. Wasp. Billy been leaning into these retro covers. Very cool. Joe, Joe Fix it also in three. Black Panther at 15. Tiger Division finishes up. Monica Rambo, four of five for the Photon. Ghost Rider, number 12, Ben Por- Percy. That's a Bjorn Barron's cover, so I like it. It's good stuff. Planet Hulk, World Breaker finishes up. Secret Invasion finishes up. Reading that, too. I know it's hard to believe, but I am. 
Uh, Hulk 13, the Ryan Otley book. Yeah, see, that homage I understand, that Steve McNiven, but it's just, it's more of the same. Yeah, it does. it's not treading new ground. No, but, not even but close. An homage shouldn't just be a total re- rehash. It should be your spin on it. Yeah. Something new. Yeah. Punisher 10, Jason Aaron. She-Hulk 11, Rainbow Rowell. That's been fun. Um, last arc finished off really well. Uh, this is Legacy 174. So, <laughs> you think they'll do something for 175? Yes, of course. Or they'll wait until 200 in two years. In two, yeah. Uh, probably They're probably going to celebrate 175. I was going to say, why not both? Because I don't know if they'll get two more years of She-Hulk. Maybe. I, I enjoy this one a lot. Um, but I don't know if, uh, how many other people join me in that. Thor 32. Strange Academy Finals, number six. Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, four of five. Daredevil at nine. Chip Zdarsky. Okay, Kyle. I think we've, I think, I think we've seen enough now. To be able to okay, so here's what here's Marshall's Mar- Marvel's plan. Okay, they have a plan. They they have a plan. Ongoings go for a while. If they're if they're evergreen ongoings, we're always gonna have this title going, or for the most part, we're gonna just reboot it from time to time. And then you know every, kind of how they rebooted like Silk three times in one year kind of thing, or <laughs> from time to time, not not that often. That was a mistake. I think even they would admit that. I would hope. And then everything else is going to be a series of five issue mini series, and we're just going to rotate the crap out of those in and out, in and out. They're, you're going to be so confused at some point that you think you saw this before. <laughs> But maybe you didn't. Maybe this is new, or maybe this is something that won a contest. I don't know. What they're, I don't know what they're doing. Okay, I guess I don't have them figured out. There's so, so many five issue series that uh, I don't understand. Let's talk Star Wars. So Anything the way we can Star get Wars. to more number ones without having to do Murder World number ones. That's <laughs> true. Oh, we got Star Wars High Republic six. And seven. Hidden Empire. Uh, it's four. It's almost over. Son of Saros. It's two of five. The 40th anniversary of Return of the Jedi begins here. What a sad looking robot on the front of Jabba's palace. <laughs> it is. It is. That variant not, by Alex Maleev. Very, very good. It's not final. You gotta love the League Arbet. Come on. That's great. Yeah. So this this cover we is not really a final cover, so we don't really know what it looks like yet. But, but it doesn't cool. matter because that Alex Maleev is the winner. Okay. Isn't that overrated Boba Fett? It is. But mm-hmm. it's really good overrated Boba Fett. Gotcha. Okay. Star Wars Yoda five is now an ongoing. Is that an ongoing? It's not a five issue series. Yoda's an ongoing. Okay. We've broken the glass ceiling. Yeah. Go Yoda. Han Solo and Chewbacca hit number 10. Uh, and then a regular Star Wars, which has been rebooted. Mm-hmm. But is an evergreen title. So it's always going to be a Star Wars while they have the license. It's back up to 32. So it's just about time for it to get rebooted again. If they're not going to wait for 50. Correct. But there's really no cash grab in it. You got to wait another 18 issues to cash grab when you can just relaunch. I think you, you cash grabs. You cash grabs when you can. Yes. Star Wars Bounty Hunter is also at 32. Yeah. Dr. Aphra hits 30. That's her second volume go-round, right? Correct. Yep. Can't remember what she hit before. Was it 30? Was it higher? It was up there. It, yeah. So her legacy number is probably pushing 100. Uh, Dar- Star Wars Darth Vader 32 hits 32. And here's, our, here's a look at our Stormbreakers. Some of them. So I think there's like a, I think there's like a bigger stable than that. Mm-hmm. There's, it's more than eight Stormbreakers. Maybe just that. That's how many this month. Yeah, are featured. No, no, it's, there's the 23 class of Marvel Stormbreakers. Maybe 
How long have they been doing Stormbreaker? How many years have they been doing that? Not real sure. At least two or three, right? Mm-hmm. So this is the new class. These eight folks. Okay. Uh, okay, it's the multiverse role-playing game. On sale July 2023. Hey, Dork Day Afternoon, Kyle. You could, there you uh, go. There you go. You start a new campaign. Absolutely. You would dominate that. I would. I would. I would love to. Well, in any universe, I can roll poorly and get murdered. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, lots of a series of hardcovers, trades, including Marvel Studios' Moon Knight: The Art of the Series. Hmm. Anything else, Kyle? Ugh. Okay. So, what is what is this month's Marvel tell us? What are they offering us? What are they giving so us? So many friggin' books, it's not even funny. Yeah, it's a it's a crap ton of books. It's a yeah. crap ton of books. Um, so I guess that's good. It's plenty for everyone. Something for everyone. Um, I'm still probably down in the single digits of things that I'll read from them, but that's okay. Not everything has to be for me. I will check out this new Doctor Strange, and I'll probably check out this new X-23. Um not a lot of new things pulling me in besides that. Yeah, the X-23 you looked quite good. Yeah. Do those right, two Sealy books? No, that'd be you. You That's got you written all over it. That's just a couple of one-shots I can skip. Time for a break from our show to pay the bills. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the C4 FAP links you could ever need. All in one place. You can provide feedback, listen, support, share, enjoy these. We have our Patreon there. You can buy us a beer or a coffee. You can check out our Instagrams, our Twitters, our Facebooks. Check out our YouTube page. You can email us. You can listen to our podcasts on Patreon if you're a subscriber, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, on Podbean. We have Google Podcasts on there. We have an Amazon wish list. You want to buy Kyle and I something? Fine. You can do that here. We appreciate it. We have Kyle's RPG podcast listed on there, so you can check out his Dork Day Afternoon offerings. We have Cowabunga links, so you can check out the Cowabunga Deep Discount FOC and Pre-Order list. Get on that. That's our LCS, so you can check that out as well. And we want to just give you opportunities to say hi, to check out what we're doing, support us if you would like, or just listen. Check out beacons.ai slash comics fun profit for all the C4 FAP links you could ever need. Thanks. Back to the show. Kyle, let's look at the hot 10 by our good friends CBSI. Of course, the hot 10 we head over to comicbookinvest.com. We are currently looking at the January 6th titles. And we will start with the number one item, which continues to be the items from Gold, uh, Thor, God of Thunder. This time, uh, number 19 from that Jason Aaron run. Still oh. half of its high DCs, which was during COVID. We're now using DC to talk about during COVID. <laughs> so, of Golly. course, during COVID, was <laughs> pretty much everything's high watermark as far as sales. So 9.8s the... had dropped all the way down to $30. Okay, this... I was thinking this was the number one. Cause I just glanced at it. This is issue 19. Oh. 19, yeah. Okay. I don't even know what this what the spec is of this. Yeah, this week those books are back up to between seventy five and one hundred dollars. So we're heading back to that back back up a little bit. Uh, let's see, Thor nineteen is Minotaur Roxon. Oh my! Oh, First yeah. appearance of Dario Ager Minotaur. Yeah, I remember that. Okay, um, that was a big deal. That's gonna he's gonna make an appearance somewhere, I guess. Uh, Ugh, the one trend I was happy to see go was people overreacting to basement dwellers spec site theories. But who's not a basement dwellers spec site? I mean, are there penthouse spec sites? Mm-hmm. Besides us, I guess. I was going to say, <laughs> we, are, we are the upper echelon. I guess. Hour two, we have Amazing Spider-Man 252. This one continues together. While not the DC highs, of course, being 
during COVID. The bottom appears huh. to have reached as 9.8s have gone back to $1,800. Holy crap. Pretty much across the board on all grades, uh, the slide appears to be over for this one. Keep looking for indicators of hope, although I may just be grasping at straws. Uh, independent indicators of hope that it'll continue to rise, or what is he what is he saying there? That the slide is op- over? Indicators of hope that the slide is over? Yeah, I th- I'm, I'm thinking that's what they're trying to say. Gotcha. At rank three, we have the Incredible Hulk 347. This one has been a roller coaster, and 9.8s are now back up to $300 after having dropped below 200. We got the more Joe Fixit stuff on that spec there. Oh, okay. Okay. Love this at rank four, the Harley Quinn number 24, the Warren Luau foil variant. $90. Your guess is as good as mine as to how many of these are actually out there. But this photorealistic homage to the J. Scott Campbell Mary Jane book looks the part of being a wanted book. I don't know. I mean, it's beautiful, but I can't tell. I can't tell why one is one is hotter than the other. Yeah. At rank five, we have Star Wars 30, the Stephanie Hans one in 25, which is almost a $40 book now. We have a first appearance. We have Star Wars, a good artist, so all good things. Yeah, those three things mixed together. I don't love the Stephanie Hans cover at all, but I guess if it's a first appearance and it's, yeah, it's not my <coughs> one in 25, it's a little rare. Yeah, exactly. At rank six, we have Superman Adventures number five. 9.8s are back over $200, and Rawls are at 60. Always like this character. But when people started pushing her as the next Harley Quinn, we were out. Now she might be making a comeback, and I can't see much longevity if it couldn't be achieved before now. Okay, live wire. Yeah, and it's an okay. And coming out of an, another animated book. That's cool. At rank seven, we have SpongeBob Comics forty three. Nine point eights are up to four hundred dollars. Rawls are between sixty and eighty. I know, I know. Homages suck. Well, this Hulk 340 homage was before they were a dime a dozen. And this is not an easy book to find, so good luck. Bonus, the cover is Sinkovich. No way. <laughs> That's not a Sinkovich cover. No way. Is it? It's what it says. Let's I'm going to check, have to Google check that. the Ebays. I have to Google that one down the road. Look at Cave Woman, yeah. though. Signed Bill Sinkovich square pants cover. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Your boy do anything for a dollar. <laughs> yep. At rank eight, we have Cave Woman number six from 1995, a $45 to $60 book. If you have ever actually tried to locate these books, you know the old ones are exceptionally hard to find. They are exceptionally niche as well. This last issue of the first series is a brutal cover and doesn't really fit the mold of issues one through five, nor does it fit with most of the current covers. Bud Rock, Bud Root. Yep. Here we have something crazy at nine. Nightwing 87, the Bruno Redondo one in 50 variants. There's apparently multiple of them. 9.8 set of them for $500. A $130 for Raw. Not sure how you would really display this set, but they do look cool when they are connected. Um, buddy, you put them side by side yeah. on the wall. That's how you that's <laughs> how you display them. There you go. Problem But solved. I think there's they're quadrants. I think it, it goes up and down. I, th- I don't think it's just connecting. Mm. You know what I'm saying? No. I think it makes a poster almost. That's cool. I think I still think it's that's easily displayable. Just frame them, frame them, and staple them to the wall. There you go. There we go. You're good. Poison Ivy number eight, the Jenny Frizen one in 50, worth about 50 or 60. Um, Who cares? Honorable mention, Spider-Man number four, the Omerto Ramos one in 25 variant of that that just came out. 25 to 30 dollars. This is not meant as a dig, but for Ramos, this isn't a bad cover. And the other honorable mention, Diary Secrets, number 26. Zone Matt Baker cover, 
a CGC 4.5 went for two grand. Matt Baker has been featured in this spot so many times. Still do not own any Baker covers, but boy, you better want one. Goal for 2023, he says. Get yeah. one of those. Not at that price, but sure. Good looking stuff. <laughs> it is <laughs> FOC time, so let's get on over to Lunar first and see how heavy the DC offerings are. It, it, sometimes they take whole weeks off. Let's see what they did this week. Is this yeah, one of those weeks? Do the 15th. And we have several pages of stuff, so that's good. Drew, I apologize, but <laughs> looks like the end of action journalism shall be a bonus. Yeah, makes makes a lot of sense. I don't I don't think there are. I think well, again, once again, DC has taken off the the week. Oh yeah, this isn't any DC stuff. This is all. Oh. Yeah. Weird so they're, looks like they're back on uh, the twenty second, and they just, they just said, you know what? We're not gonna we're not gonna do any this week. We're not worried about it, so have fun. <laughs> I guess that's okay. Yeah. Um, any of these rando uh, publishers pop out at you? Nope. From Lunar. Then let's shoot on down to my boys at Image. Take a look at the ten tenth issue of Little Monsters. Dustin Wynn crushing it. That's a good looking cover. Image 30th anniversary anniversary anthology hits ten, its tenth issue as well. Monarch launches. Yeah. Uh, this is Rodney Barnes and Alec Linz. Should be a good one. Nightclub number one. That's that. Um. That's the second printing. Mm-hmm. I did read this one. Um. It was kind of cool. The uh, guy gets turned into a vampire. But he still wants to kind of be internet famous, so he still wants to do his hang out with his buddies and do his YouTube thing. So we'll see how that goes. That sounds kind of rad. Two graves hits four. First two issues have been up and down. Boom doesn't give us much. Just know your station. Mm-hmm. Stranger Things book releasing from Dark Horse. Tales from Hawkins. And Space Job is a four issue series. After five long years of soul-crushing servitude as a chef's assistant, Danny Sheridan is getting his dream job in space as first officer aboard the SS George Bush. But on his first day, he finds himself crashing back to reality. Nothing seems right. The crew is subpar. Something's going on. And first officer Danny Sheridan is going to get to the bottom of it or die trying. I wonder why they said his name first and last name both times in the solicit. Hmm. That's weird. Very. I'm kind of intrigued by it, though. What is it, like a one-way death mission? Is that what that's about? I think so, yeah. Marvel giving us um, Avengers End Times, the Marvel Tales. Who's the creative team on that? Bendis? Bendis, yeah. Also, this is old stuff. This is the 2010 Avengers run. So this isn't redoing anything new. This is just no. rehash? This is just collecting. So is that what that other remender was doing too? Then uh, I don't think so. So it was, but it was also Marvel Tales. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. I don't feel like reading the solicit to find out. So <laughs> not worth it. <laughs> I'm gonna take your word for it, especially since it's eight dollars. It's eight bucks. I'm not getting it anyway. Fourth issue of Fantastic Four coming up, and we finally. Fine. Well, I, I mean, I can't say finally since we're waiting 20 issues to find out what happened in Spider-Man. Um, but three issues, we, t- we had to go three issues before we found out what was why the Fantastic Four split up. Why are they not together? Why is the Baxter Building gone, etc.? So what what's happening? We're gonna That's find so out. many less issues than than it took for Spider-Man, though. Yeah, so many, so many less. So good, good on you. Um, this is the last chance to secure your copy of the free comic book day titles for Marvel. Uh, Spider-Man, Venom, Marvel Voices, uh, X-Men, Aven- Avengers X-Men, Spidey and Friends, all available. Get them all there, hot. Yep, last chance. The old Hulk no prize cover. 
Yeah, you were excited about this in the um, uh, when we did the Marvel previews about it, right? Correct. Or was that an? Or was there a Node Prize a variant on something else? Or was it this one? I think there was a couple different ones. Okay. So this is not the only one they'll be. <clears throat> Um, we're going to get Marvel Voices Wakanda Forever, number one, launching. And a second printing for Mary Jane and Black Cat, number one. That's All right. This is version. where we get Moon Knight's Murder World book, too. I forgot about Moon Knight having a murder world. Yeah. So this would be issue three, right? This would be issue three. Yes. And here's where we get Nightcrawlers, number one. I'm interested in this book. It's only a three issue series. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Spider Man Lost Hunt and Spider Man 5. Anything in the Star Wars realm there that's tickling your fancy? Nothing too crazy. There's more of the same books. What about that Sprouse uh, Return of the Jedi cover? Is that, is that Han coming out of Carbonite? Is that what that scene is? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because you can see that uh, Leia's got her bounty hunter outfit on. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's a great poster from that cover that we were talking about, that x really cover. Let's say the poster came out two months before the actual book's coming out. That's kind of neat. Dynamite giving us anything. Some more Mad Balls and Garbage Spell kids. They are re-releasing hero gasm as a virgin metal c- cover for a hundred dollars <laughs> okay wow you want, you're passing I'm, I'm guessing. yeah cool cover though yeah who, who's that big of a super fan no somebody somebody is we'll say we'll solve yeah uh, so for our smaller covers we're looking at the second issue of chopping block uh, family time from a blaze hitting its third issue Frank Miller's Ronin. It's is book two, issue two. And don't forget the gangster Asperista. Black Mask. Yes, that's right. I mentioned that one. It's at two. Uh, Black Mask also gives us God Killer for those I love. I will sacrifice number one. The run on sentence award goes to Black Mask. Oh, that's a second. That's a second printing. Mm-hmm. Disregard. Well, we've got. Three second printing, so Harrower number one from Boom. Just a Jordan is, book. Why is that not up in the Boom section? Can you explain yeah. that to me? That's weird. They have interns doing this, putting this together. New hires. What's happening? Come on, just, previous Justin stuff Jordan together. book. Focus, focus. Yeah, yeah. It's Justin Jordan. Jordan. I'm, I'm excited. There's nothing to fear in the quaint town of Harrow, New York, except for for the Harrower. So, I guess. That's cool. There's Hamlin from Action Labs. It is a resolicit on that one. So that means it didn't sell well enough the first time around? Usually. Is that usually what that means? And here we continue this thing with Quested being the video game homage. Here we have in the cover C... The homage to Legend of Zelda, A Vink to the Past, the uh, the uh, instruction manual. That's great. Yep. Mm. <laughs> Source Point Press gives us a trade paperback. It rhymes with Funt with a female on the cover. So they're crossing some boundaries <laughs> there. All right, Kyle. What do we got? What are you doing? Well, you got, um, you got a lot to choose from. Um, you know, Harrowers from Boom. I like Justin Jordan. It seems kind of, you know, boogeyman-ish. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, there's Nightcrawlers. Those are my two that I'm kind of banting about. Okay. Um, I'm going to do the Nightcrawlers, number one, from Sizebury, or the Marvel book. Okay. Uh, I was thinking Space Job. <laughs> it there you go. Like- and then I was also thinking Harrower. Uh, I don't. I think I'm going to go with Monarch instead. I'm going to oh, go wow. with Image 
new title instead of boom new title um and i'm gonna go with rodney barnes over justin jordan so slight edge there so i'm gonna go with monarch the first issue. very cool i like it all right, let's slide over to our good friends over at Cover Price. Yeah, Cover Price gives us their uh, top 20, essentially. Um, I'll go through the first half here. Um, at rank one, we have Secret Wars 2, number three. So we have the second iteration of Secret Wars, the third book from 1985. Marvel has a habit of building characters up for uh, inevitable payoff. Whether it's a big or small way, it's always up for grabs. The fans appear to have a funny feeling regarding the Beyonder. He previously trended due to his appearance, played by Lawrence Fishburne, in Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur series. But facts and rumors are swirling, causing him to trend all over again. High sale of $150 for CGC 9.8, and rolls around 9 bucks. At rank 2, we have Suit. Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars, number one from the original series in 1984. This book marks the beginning of an epic storyline that introduced the fan base to numerous new characters and crazy events. One of those characters, the Beyonder, with at least his voice, as he was just a bit of light. What do you think about that, Drew? I don't see it. I don't. I can't. I can't the, put that together. The, the first appearance of a voice is that? <laughs> does that do anything for you? First per appearance has a bit of light. Yeah. Disembodied voice. I'm gonna CGC pass. nine point eight, four hundred and sixty eight dollars, and Rawls going for thirty five bucks. So at rank three, I was reading up on this. Uh, I saw some stuff on it on the internet. We have the Batman Spawn number one, the Barnes and Noble edition. Okay. This book was one of more than 12 variants released to commemorate the third outing of Batman and Spawn and quickly became one of the books to get. While it was released as an exclusive to a major retailer, these books went quick. Fewer high-grade copies made it to the aftermarket as retailer shelves are not conducive to minting fresh books. Since its release, this book has been has seen steady gains in the aftermarket and in this top 10 and runners up list tracking 28 copies sold $200 for CGC 9.8 and 38 bucks on regular rolls. Huh? Interesting. Yeah. At rank four, we have Superman one, two, three, the glow in the dark issue from 1997. The nineties were a, were rife with epic costumes for some of our favorite heroes. Superman got the same treatment, crushing it with the blue suit aimed at, at containing his new electromagnetic power. Eighty dollars for CGC nine point four and rolls three bucks. I guess but the lesson saw, for yeah. the uh, Barnes and Noble variant is, if like Ollie's ever gets a variant, you know, you need to really track down that nine eight because they're yeah, going to get <laughs> those things are going to get creased. <laughs> At rank five, we have the Amazing Spider-Man number one, the Salvador La Roca. M&M Spotlight, this is one, was limited to 1,000 books. A CGC 9.8 is now worth $2,400. And uh, you can get the regular rolls. You're not finding them for less than 400 bucks, it doesn't look like. But there is also a, there's one CGC 9.9 .9 that went for almost six grand. Man, that's some rich mofos out there. Yeah. And this was a $75 buck when you bought it. At rank okay. six, we have the Incredible Hulk 347 from 1988. Of course, this is Joe Fixit. $289 for 9.8. 20 bucks for Rawls. Star Wars 30, the Andreas Gilonet design cover. This has just got the robot on the front. The recent Star Wars run has been full of first appearances of new characters, species, and now droids. This book features several first appearances of unnamed characters, but attention is focused on the rather cold edition of the Nile Droid. $19 for raw copies, but you can usually pick them up for about 8 bucks. I want to see what they look like. I don't like remember them. Oh, okay. At rank 8, we have Venom Lethal Protectors, number 1, from 1993. Uh, 160 bucks for a CGC 9.8. And Rawls for 19 Rank 9 gives us Poison IV, number 8. The Jenny Frizen E foil cover, which is a one in fifty, um, ninety dollars for raw. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Almost double ratio right away. 
And at rank 10, Spider-Man 2099, number one, a book I let go far too early. $150 for a CDC 9.8, FMV 17 bucks. Yeah, talk to me when you uh, let go of uh, ASM 300. At rank 11, we have the Joker, the man who stopped laughing, number four, the Lee Bermejo. That's the Christmas cover that Kyle famously said would have no lasting power. Correct. And here, we, mean, here we are. We're, we're still in January. Still selling Oh, my well. goodness. We're two weeks after Christmas. Ah. 30, 34 copies have sold um, all the way up to $16 for us. So take that, Kyle. It's an $8 book. I was going to say it was a $10 <laughs> book, so who cares? <laughs> Batman 131. Uh, the one in 25 Nakayama cover uh, sold 31 copies with a high sale of 20 bucks for a raw. Uh, rank 13, we have Batman Superman World's Finest, number 10, the Dan Moore holiday card cover C. Um, this sold 18 copies with a high of 36 bucks for a raw. Uh, rank 14, we have X Force number two from 1991. First appearance of Weapon X. No, not that Weapon X. We're talking about Garrison Kane, a former member of Cable's group, Six Pack. Uh, so this track, 16 copies sold, high sale of 84 bucks for a CGC 9.8. Uh, rank 15, we have The Amazing Spider-Man number 346 from 1991. Uh, an iconic Eric Larson Venom cover. 14 copies of this moved, high sale of 220 or CGC 9.8. Uh, rank 16, we have Burning Man number one, a bad idea book. Uh, this is the, the idea of an infinite set of narratives. Uh, I don't know what that means. And bad oh, ideas, yeah. unique weird. marketing strategy has captured the attention of many collectors. As more story avenues are releasing, it will be interesting to see which paths will be more collectible than others. We track 12 copies sold at a seven-day Trend of 146 and a high sale of $33 for a raw and near mint. So, what's the deal with Burning Man? Let me. E. I, I'm going to have to do a quick Google on that. What's a, what's a variant narrative, right? Um, Burning Man number one it. offers bad idea, all in sticker owners, exclusive comics. Yeah. It's to, a choose your own adventure story. Bad, who got. Bad idea fans who got the all-in sticker when they pre-ordered the, the, the entire slate of Part 2 titles redeem that sticker for an otherwise unavailable story path. From So it's a variant story direction that you can only get. Don't encourage them. Kyle. No, that's weird. Yeah. Don't, don't encourage them, but it is kind of interesting. Um, I rank 17, the Libra Man Who cover B of The Man Who Stopped Laughing number 3. 20 more copies of this sold. Uh, a high sale of $30 for a CGC 9.8. <laughs> that's not good. That no. can't be right. That's a, that's a typo of some sort. Um, at rank 18, because the, this is the uh, near mint raw is going for 24. So for an extra five bucks, you can get a CGC 9.8. I don't think that's right. <laughs> that doesn't seem right. <laughs> no. Uh, let's go to. Number 18 to Book of Slaughter, number one, the Dan Mora book, uh, continues to have heat. We've got some 14 copies sold. I sell almost $12 for a raw. At rank 19, we have Star Wars The Mandalorian, number one, that I completely destroyed mm -hmm. because of its lack of originality. Yeah, it's um, just carbon copy from the show. Uh, 17 copies sold. I sell $135 for CGC 9.8. So, okay. Uh, at rank 20, the Savage She-Hulk, number one, from 1980. Still moving. 12 copies sold. High sale of 840 for a CGC. Near Mint. Raw's around 139. 840 seems crazy, but... It's cool. Yeah. That's not even first appearance, right? Oh, it might be. It might be. Is it? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. All right, Kyle, it's time for... What the people came to see. That's right. The sneak peek at next week. This is where Drew and I crawl through the books coming out in your local comic book shops this coming Tuesday and Wednesday. And we find the things that we cannot live without and tell you what to do. We will head on over to our good friends at Lunar Distributions and look and see, since DC stood us up for FOC, 
Let's see what they have for us on a regular week. These are the books coming out the 17th. The 17th. Yep. Including some really nice looking art germ Batgirls. Yeah, it's a really nice Batgirl, isn't it? We've got a nice um, omnibus of the Tomasi and Gleason run on Batman and Robin. We love that. Love that. Yeah. It was a great series. World's Finest hits 11. They do. Here's your Jack White cover as well. Yes, that's finally going to come out. We'll see. We'll see who pre-ordered it. Well, who forgot? Like me. <laughs> um, Black Adam doing some interesting stuff. I don't really recognize a lot of those people on the cover, though. Hey, Fables is back. Feels like they've been going a while. 157 of 162. That's a miniseries now, y'all. Yeah. Flash having fun with their covers. There's our gangster aspirates to number one. Is that the only cover of that? Or is this a delayed? I think it's a delayed, yeah. Gotcha. God killer for those I love, I will sacrifice. Mm. Also just the one cover, so I, I'm a little hesitant to think that's actually the first time it's coming out. What is going on with highball number five? Holy smokes. What are they doing to that guy? <laughs> That's an odd one. <laughs> are those uh, battery cables? Jumper cables? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We got some electroshock, it looks like. Uh, the Lazarus Planet stuff continues. I think I, think I set that. I'm going to set that one out. Miss Meow has some nice covers there. Monkey Prince. Is that a, is that a Lazarus cover? Or Lazarus crossover? Lazarus Planet crossover? I think it is. No, is it? I think so, yeah. Oh, yeah, I see it at the top there. Nightwing. Um, Nightwing 100. Yeah, that's a big one. And the the acetate there, I, I saw Bruno's Twitter where he had that. It was pretty nice. The acetate was really nice. Mm. But they're all very nice. Yeah. You were a big fan of the George Perez, weren't you? I was. I was indeed. I love the Disco Nightwing. Yeah. Titans having some fun. Trojan number one. I forgot what that was. What is that? Um, bunch of uh, fantasy creatures. But it is some connection to Mike Diodato. I don't know what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Just the covers, maybe? Yeah. That's it from those guys. Let's see what our good friends down at Image have. I'm going to collect that Above Snakes as a trade paperback. That was good. Worth worth reading. I enjoyed it. Art Brute. I'm hoping for a lot more out of that second issue. Uh, first issue was, <laughs> was just so strange. I was going to ask if it's wacky. It looks wacky. I mean, I don't mind like an ice cream man goes wacky. Yeah. It, it, it brings it home. This was wacky without a payoff to me. Other, other people seem to dig it. I was not one of them. So I'm going to hope the second one's better. Shirtless Bear Fire 2. Nice. Uh, Immortal Sergeant number one is a Joe Kelly Ken Nomura book. Um, it is reuniting the I Kill Giants team, which was a great, great book. Um, this one is about uh, on the eve of his unwelcome retirement, Jim Sargent, a.k.a. Sarge, a grizzled old school detective catches a break on a murder case that's haunted him for decades, which I think might be fun. He also yeah. has a, an anxiety-riddled adult son that is his, um, he's bringing along for the ride. So that could be an interesting one. I like the concept. Nightclubs give us a second issue, and we're interested to check that out, see if that continues the fun stuff. And we get to the 10th issue of What's the Furthest Place from Here? Which has been a really fun book. A little up and down at first, but it's really kind of hitting its stride now, I think. Dune. Um, feels like I skipped that last round of Dune, so I'll probably skip this one. Another tw- Was the prior one a 12 issue series? I don't remember it being that long, but maybe. I don't think so either. I think it was only like a five. Has it even been a year since the last movie was out? The first half? I don't think no. so. No. Mm. Uh, third issue of Resident Alien. I was looking at that. I like that cover. That looks so really 
Yeah, really good cover. solid covers. Then White Savior, Eric Nguyen, Scott Burnham. Hmm. IDW, hmm. Nothing really there. Yeah, nothing that piques my interest. Marvel, what are they doing for us? We've got the Avengers Forever 13. We've got the homage cover to the Vision cover. Oh, okay. All right. Very cool there. I like that. That's, they're hit or miss for me, but that's I like that one. You like that one. Bounty Hunters. Star Wars Bounty Hunters with a classic C-3PO and R2-D2 shot on the cover. That's great. Heading towards Jabba's Palace. Strange hits number 10. So that was... So that's Jed McKay on that book, too. I For, for some reason, I thought there was a... Wasn't there another strange book that had somebody else on it? Like Trad Moore or something? Yeah, that already, run, sure. that already yeah. ran its course, maybe? Probably. Yeah. Wasp number one. Oh, with your Window Shades variant. <laughs> Huge fan. Who's doing this again? Oh, Al Ewing. I'll check it out. Barbaric Hell to Pay from Vault Comics. Is that a one shot or is that an ongoing? Mm, That's an ongoing. Is it an ongoing? I think so. Chicken Devils hits number two. They have a great colorist on that. I like the work. It looks really crisp and clean and dynamic. They're always trying to get rid of your crossed covers here. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, they're pretty good deals. Probably beat to heck, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah. they are pretty good deals. Oh, what's that? I bet that Lugosi Rise and Fall of Hollywood's Dracula is a fun hardcover. I can't spend them to find out. <laughs> Watson and Holmes. I remember that book from way back. What publisher is this one on? Is it the same? This that's not this. I don't think that's the same publisher it was on originally. Yeah, this is Fair Square, definitely. Yeah, I definitely didn't know a Fair Square. Yeah, but I do remember a Watson and Holmes, unless it's a unless it's a different one. Yeah, this is the uh, is the new Black Watson and Holmes. So uh, the actual that's... title is Noir is the new Black Watson and Holmes. Yeah, but I th- I mean that was the same concept back then. Oh, was so it? So this this is must just be collecting it. Um, it doesn't say it's Greek, but I, yeah, I remember that from years and years ago, unless I'm totally off, which is also possible. So is, um, the Quintara stone number three from Keen spot. Is that a moon Knight ripoff? It looks like it. Yeah. I was thinking. So too. Ooh, it's fourth issue of there's something wrong with Patrick Todd. Seems like it's been a little overdue. That was a good series. Anxious Tim Seeley see. has his Keen Spot book coming out as well. Lucky. Okay. One. All right, Kyle. I think I got enough to pick, make my pick. How about you? Oh man, I'm struggling. Got two good ones, but I think I, I think I know which way I'm going. There you go. I'll go ahead and pick mine while you're looking. So go for it. I'm gonna go with the Image book. So two image books for me on FOC and and uh, sneak peek. This is Immortal Sergeant. This is Joe Kelly, Ken Demura from the I, I Kill Giants guys getting back together. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's from Image. So I'm really excited about this one. So. And I've got to go Nightwing 100, and I've got to go yeah. the George Perez design. I like the the color design variant, but it's the ratioed. So the open to order one is the sketch, so that's going to be it. But I, I, I do love, love, love the look at the ratio one. The the Nightwing 100 cover H is what you're saying? Yes, yes. So you picked that as a uh, FOC and followed up, doubled down on. Yeah, I, I, it's that's, it is both good. my love for Nightwing and Perez have yes. have pushed through the boundaries. That's great. That's great. All right, that's it. Yeah, we thank you for tagging along with Drew and myself as through our sneak peek end next week and all of our shenanigans through here. We appreciate you guys. You want more from us, more content, more everything, more shenanigans, um, head on over to Patreon, find Comics for Fun and Profit. Join our Discord, be part of all of our fun. We've got some new and interesting things pop, 
uh, planned for 2023. So be the first to hear about those things by being part of our team. We thank you so for Drew and for myself. See ya. As you know, our LCS is Cowabunga Comics, Lake Country, Wisconsin's best pop culture destination for new comics, back issues, gaming, retro video games, vinyl, and figures. Give them a call, 262-569-9999. Check them out online at cowabungacomics.com or follow them on Twitter at Incredical. Um, they are our LCS and we utilize their deep discount mail order service to bring Oconomowoc, Wisconsin closer to us. They'll take care of you. Tell them Drew and Kyle sent you. Say hi to Eric and James from us. If you need an LCS, you can't go wrong with Cowabunga Comics.